Today we will introduce part one of the life science biology textbook of the first secondary year. So first of all, we will talk about part one, which constitute a functional organization. In this part, we will discuss function of nutrition and organization in chlorophyllic vascular plants. The study of nutrition of a chlorophyllic vascular plant permits the establishment of a relationship between this function and the specialized structure of the plants. The figure below shows a, a large variety of green plants which provides the, the whole environment with nutrients and fresh air to breathe. So as we know previously that chlorophyllic plants are primary producers. When exposed to light, they manufacture their proper organic materials from exclusively mineral substances. Water and mineral ions absorbed from the soil constitute the crude sap. This organic material manufactured in the leaf form the elaborated sap. The crude sap and the elaborated sap circulate in the plant through conducting elements. So this information will be discussed in details through this part of the book. This will be divided on three different chapters. Chapter 1 talks about autotrophy and photosynthesis. Chapter 2 will deal, will deal with plant supply with raw materials and chapter 3 will talk about the use of photosynthetic products. Problems to be solved through this chapter, chapter 1 I mean, how to prove the existence of photosynthesis? Where does photosynthesis takes place? take place? What are the necessary conditions for photosynthesis to take place? What are the necessary substances for the nutrition of chlorophyllic plants? And these problems are solved according to the given activities. First activity will deal with significance of autotrophy. The second one will talk about photosynthesis, special, special organisms, conditions. The third one will talk about the chloroplast which is the site of photosynthesis and the fourth one will talk about photosynthetic gas exchange according to the first activity which talks about the significance of autotrophy the question is what is autotrophy autotrophy is a mode of nutrition by which an organism produces its own food so as an introduction to this activity, the chlorophyllic plants are capable of living a strictly mineral in strictly mineral medium and of elaborating their proper organic materials. How to determine the needs of mineral of a green plant? How to identify their chemical composition? This activity is divided into two parts. The first part will deal with the importance of water and minerals and the second part will uh, talk according to the first topic which deals with the importance of water and minerals they took in document A page 18 in your textbook two lettuce plants one is dipped in uh, distilled water and another is dipped on the right in a nutritive medium. This nutritive medium contains some minerals necessary for growing plants, green plants. What do you see in this figure? First of all, the lettuce plant on the left grew less than that of the right one, which grew in a strictly nutritive medium with mineral substances. So what do you conclude? One can conclude that green plants needs nutritive medium 
or elements um, contained in a nutritive medium necessary for its growth. So if you are asked to interpret this experiment, you will say the plant which, which, which was dipped in water grew less than the other plant which was dipped in nutritive medium. This indicates that green plants need nutritive medium to grow well. According to document B, which shows the results of the second experiment, in which they grew green wheat on an absorbing inert medium supplied with new nutritive liquid, which is a knobs liquid, or lacking certain mineral ions to test the importance of these minerals for the growing of these plants. In these four pots, they introduced the same green wheat grass and then they introduced in the first one a complete medium containing all the necessary minerals for plant growth. The second one was lacking phosphorus. The third one was lacking nitrogen while the fourth one was lacking potassium. What do you observe by these results? First of all, the plant one grew the most than the others, which indicates that plant growth needs a complete mineral medium to grow well. On the other hand, the second, the third and the fourth one which lack P or N or K mineral ions didn't grow well. So this will indicate that phosphorus, potassium and nitrogen are very important ions for plant growth in a mineral medium. So what, the, what was the tested hypothesis of this experiment? Exactly. It was that P, N and K are mineral ions necessary for plant growth. And what is the objective of this experiment? Exactly. It was showing the importance of some mineral ions for plant growth. Make sure that you, you should know that knobs liquid ensures the complete growth and development of chlorophyllic plant even without soil. So we can plant or, or grow green plants in liquid containing these minerals without the presence of soil. These information are specific only for green plants which are autotrophs. However, fungi which are heter heterotrophic organisms cannot develop in knobs liquid unless an organic substance such as glucose is added to the medium. The composition of fertilizers used in agricultural practices is very similar in composition to knobs liquid. It contains nitrates, phosphates and sulfates or a mixture of these three minerals. So document C shows the composition of snobs liquid which contains these chemicals. You don't have to, to remember or memorize this table but you have to take into consideration that any Plant fertilizer will contain these chemicals such as calcium nitrate, potassium nitrate. These two substances will provide N nitrogen to the green plants for growth. Monopotassium phosphate which provides the P phosphate 
and magnesium sulfate which will provide sulfate and ferric chloride which also provides its ions to, to provide proper growth of green plants. So the second part of this activity will identify the chemical composition of the living materials produced by the green plants. First, document D will show the identification of some organic substances of these living organisms. To the left, we are seeing how to apply iodine test by adding some iodine water to potato tuber that will give blue coloration which will indicate that starch in is identified in potato and therefore potato contains starch in the middle failing test will give red brick precipitate upon boiling by mixing the failing reagents with grape juice and this indicates that reducing sugars are being produced by the grape plants to the right violet coloration appeared when boiling beans extracts with caustic soda which is NaOH with copper sulfate solution which indicates that proteins are being produced by green plants so green plants will produce reducing sugars proteins and starch Now, according to document E on page 19 in your textbook, they were, they were also identifying the production of carbon dioxide that turns the lime water into milky by heating in an iodizer a leafy twig, which indicates that an organic material contain, containing carbon is being produced by the green plants as well and thus document F will show the principal groups of organic materials which are produced by these plants which carbohydrates proteins and lipids so any product produced by plants or green plants such as glucose, sucrose, starch, lactose, albumin, chlorophyll, amino acids, olive oil or other substances are products produced by green plants. So in conclusion, products produced by green plants are 